foul in the case of Sparrow. In the case of Pepe, he really doesn't have even uh, a wealth, and he hasn't been hit that much to get one. Uh, Sparrow is going back to his game plan again of standing back and looking at Pep and getting caught with one. He did there, and he will continue to catch leather if he continues this type of tactic. He has to get on the inside. Whether he manhandles his, his way in there or what he has to do get on the inside, that is the safest place for him. Well, one of the cornermen between rounds working in Pep's corner asked him if he was all right. His manager promptly pushed the man out of the way, said, don't ask him if he's all right, don't ask him, he's all right. If he's not all right now, he never will be, and certainly Tony Pep has been all right in the bout so far, better than all right. Sparrow now pursuing him across the ring. Pep continuing to show some decent lateral movement, although at the moment he's tied up. But note how the elbows are down, the gloves up. There's a good combination by Pep. Punches there. Well, Carl Sparrow went down about five shots to the body, and Pep just stood back, shook his head, and then came back five shots to Carl Sparrow's head. And that's the way it, it really has beaten uh, Sparrow, is, is hitting a lot of arms uh, when he gets on the inside. He's not placing his shots well, and then when he gets on the inside, he hesitates. He really has to work his man over a lot better than what he's doing. His shots are not with the body behind him either. They're a sort of a slapping, snappy shot that sound nice, but there's no real force behind them. Sparrow, once again, now uh, beginning to work his way inside, and that is precisely what the corner, Tony Pep's corner, does not want him to do. So Pep moves back outside, showing that lateral movement. Several good punches there. Not power punches, but punches that take their toll over the course of a 12-round fight. He's just picking Sparrow off. He's looking for the openings, playing it very, very smart. And uh, in the meantime, Sparrow's just catching the shots. He's not moving his head. He's catching them. And he's going to continue to catch them if he doesn't move underneath those shots, get in the inside, pull his way on the inside if he has to, and stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Well, virtually no difference in weight between the two. Tony Pep weighed in at 129. Carlton Sparrow at 128. So that certainly hasn't been a factor. Simply the fact that the better boxer so far has been Pep. And Sparrow back to his corner to perhaps work out a new strategy if he can. Here we have Pep with that nice jab, shaking his head after getting hit with a combination of the body, and then just sliding off to the side, not getting nailed on the ropes. A smart move, uh, acting like a veteran, really. Here he is again with those short little shots there, just keeping his man off balance, and then covering up on the inside with those long arms of his, those long, long elbows, and then dropping back with that nice right hand lead. Five in a row. Now you cannot stand there. You understand? Because of his reach, you've got to keep the head moving. When you punch to him, you're punching three, four, five in a row. Mm -hmm. you got it? Three, four, five in a row. If you want to punch up, head, don't face him. Now let's see you. Three, four, well, there's a look at Carlton Sparrow of Las Vegas, Nevada, in against the Canadian featherweight champion Tony Pep from Vancouver. They are fighting for a junior lightweight crown, that belonging to the WBC Continental Americas. And as Carlton Sparrow came out of his corner here to start round nine, you saw that he has taken a little bit of a beating so far, off his feet just once in the fight, but a couple of cuts and some welts and some bruises. And his manager was telling him between rounds, look, you can't stand there and let this big fella hit you four or five shots in a row. You've got to get inside and throw four or five shots of your own. And that's what Sparrow's been trying to do through the middle and later round so far, but having trouble as Pep stays on the outside and boxes very successfully. Kind of interesting to me, Peter, that in Sparrow's record of 23 and 3, he's only got five, five knockouts according to the record. With the way he throws those punches, you don't, you'd have to assume that he'd have had more knockouts than that. I wonder what that is. Well, S S Sparrow, uh, if you're referring to his record, actually has 15 or 16 KOs. But again, I think they're against much lesser and inferior opponents, uh, really, to build his record. And then when he got in against the good guys, uh, he found out that uh, life is tough, and he got KO'd himself very, very rapidly. Um, He's got to get inspired here. He really does. He, he, it's almost as if he's blasé about this fight. He, he's almost giving up the pep, and, and uh, he really sees no way, way around us. He just seems to be giving up the ghost. And that's not the way to, to be as a professional. You've got to think that every combination can hurt your opponent. Every round, you can turn the fight around. And the way he's going about it right now is as if he's going with his lunch pail, and he has to do his job, and he's going to take a loss. Tony Pep here in round nine. Still attempting to stay outside and throw those long moves. Now, that was a good right hand by Sparrow. That caught Pep on the cheek. 
Didn't seem to do a lot of damage to him, but a good blow nevertheless. Pep standing back once again, trying to pick his spots. Pat O'Reilly, the referee, in to separate them quickly. This Pep had been turned around and was being held by Sparrow. Sparrow ducking his head back in, trying to work to the body. But Pep's arms are so very long that he can hold his gloves up to protect his chin and keep his elbows down to protect his body simultaneously. That's how long this young man's arms are. Well, Pep is continuing to move on his feet, and what he's doing is he's pacing himself again. He only moves when he has to. And then when he moves, he's out of range of, of Sparrow. But Sparrow, in return, is watching him move away, and he's just allowing Pep to do it. If he picked his feet up and took after Pep, that would make it an awful lot more interesting for, for Sparrow because Sparrow would be right on top of his man. He's not cutting the ring off, and he's not following up after him. He's not getting inspired. Tony Pep telling me a couple of days ago that he had his best training session ever in preparation for this fight. He did some excellent sparring, he said, worked hard in the gym and has never felt better. Still hard to believe a, a featherweight standing six foot one. This is not a featherweight bout, as I told you. This is for the junior lightweight crown. But the Tony Pep, the Canadian featherweight champion, back to his corner after nine rounds and very much in command. Well, Pep continuing to move on his feet, just pacing himself nicely and throwing those short little shots and catching Sparrow, who's fighting really now an uninspired fight. Here's Pep again with those long punches, a long right hand. Now Sparrow gets a little inspired, nice right uppercut, misses with the left hook, too looping with that left hook. He shortened up his punches on the inside, he'd be more effective. Come on, I'll tell you what. Go away both ways, and here you can start did you hear what I said? Yes. Okay. And now a shot, and you see some of the large crowd here at the Agrodome in Vancouver as we prepare for round 10 of this scheduled 12-rounder for the WBC Continental Americas Championship in the junior lightweight category. Tony Pep from Vancouver moving up to this weight division for the first time in his career. He is the Canadian featherweight champion with a record of 9-0, and zero, just 20 years old from Vancouver. And he has been in absolute control in this fight so far using his... Six foot one inch frame and 78 inch reach. They have things pretty much his own way against Carlton Sparrow. Well, he's a very confident fighter fighting against shorter men. He knows what to do with them when they do a particular type of tactic. He does another tactic that will throw them off and uh, he'll be able to score with. He's quite accomplished uh, in that effort. There's no doubt about that. But in, in any case, Sparrow is not making it that hard for him. He, there's what Sparrow has to do. Cut his man off and get after him. Make a fight of this. Rough him up any way he has to stay inside. There's what he has to be and throw combinations. He's got nothing to lose here. He's well behind on all scorecards. He must be. Interesting. Pep's corner uh, during the intermission between the last round and this one. We're telling him to get back to the lateral movement. Now, they told him that earlier in the fight, and he began moving laterally to his left constantly. They have told him now that they want him to move laterally in both directions. I guess they may be a little worried, Peter, that Sparrow may be beginning to solve the strategy and they want to change it up just a little bit to confuse him well the the corners watching him and they're watching the tactics that pep is using and they're seeing their man moving only one way and that's not what you do against an opponent you always change your direction so that it throws him off you change all types of things that it keeps your man guessing and obviously they picked up on that and they want him to change his direction throughout the fight so sparrow can't really pick up on that and cut him off well Sparrow was trying with that looping right hand that I mentioned earlier in the fight that might be effective against uh, the type of uh, slip that Pep is doing because Pep often leans to his left into the looping right hand. Pep moving to his left once again now, left to the body, right to the head, going downstairs and upstairs, working both the body and the head. Another break at ring center. And as we pointed out earlier, Sparrow's corner has done an excellent job of curtailing the couple of cuts that he has suffered in the fight so far. Just one knockdown in the fight. Sparrow going down earlier as Pep caught him with a, a good right hand, but he regained his feet immediately. The referee, Pat O'Reilly, over quickly to ask him if he was all right. He indicated that yes, he was. His eyes were not flashing. He was fine. And indeed, he has been fine since. Simply a case of him being outboxed by a taller opponent that for the most part he's been unable to get inside of. A bit of a foul on Sparrow's part. He spun his man and hit him in the, in the back of the neck, really a rapid punch, but uh, Pep did not complain, and the referee did not see fit to touch him. Now here, Pep is paying him in kind. He's throwing combinations, and he's giving Sparrow a little bit of a boxing lesson here. These fellas have hit the wall now, really. They're in the 10th round, and they're really into their second wind almost right now, and uh, they're close to home. They can't